Hi guys, Toby Dobbs here, and today I'm doing a video review on the DVLA Phantom Reactor. And the one I've got in front of me is the Phantom Reactor 900. There's two of them, 600 and 900, and this has 900 watts of RMS power. Now, before you flame me in this video, I'm not sponsored, I'm not biased of any sorts, and yes, I know there's a bit of echo in terms of in my small room, but this speaker was tested in my living room where there's no echo whatsoever. In this review, I'll be comparing the speaker to other um, similar speakers, be it soundbars, be it uh, Bluetooth speakers or smart speakers, um, and I'll be putting it to its test. Now, the speaker I've got in front of me costs £1,290. Now, I appreciate that's a lot cheaper than the DVL Gold or the Platinum Gold, as it's called now, uh, which is a lot more expensive, or over £2,000. However, even at this price range, it is a very expensive Bluetooth speaker. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now first, let's talk about the build quality and design. Now, the speaker itself is very much reminiscent of its uh, larger sibling. It is just very much a shrunk down um, version. However, there's a few differences that you might notice. The biggest difference is there is no sort of gold or silver plate on the side. It's just pure white. At the top of the speaker, you'll be noticing there's a single unit. There's no line going through it anymore. Neither is there a line going through the base drivers that are fine on the side. That's because Divialet have created a new design which meant that the whole unit is mounted from the back rather than from the sides where that's how the old uh, Phantom uh, was made. Nevertheless, um, there's a, a, a few other sort of bigger differences between the two is the fact that this doesn't have a dedicated tweeter. There's only a single uh, forward facing uh, mid range um, driver at the front and uh, two base drivers on uh, either side, which again have this sort of wobbly sort of um, look to them when they're playing. And I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to play some music a little later. Um, aside that, uh, around the back, you've got the radiator, so to speak, the grill, which is going to um, keep this uh, little speaker um, from heating up. But then you've got an RJ45 port, Ethernet port as well. Um, you've got an optical slash a 3.5 mil jack. You've got an 8 pin connector, which is currently connected in right now. You've got an on and off switch. Now, the on and off switch is a little bit hit and miss because it doesn't fully switch off the speaker. At least from my experience, I left it idle for quite a long time and it wouldn't fully switch it off. And then finally, at the top of the speaker itself, and I'm just trying to balance it so it doesn't, the driver doesn't feel it's on the table, but nevertheless, you've got uh, touchscreen uh, buttons, you've got the link uh, button, which is um, useful for uh, setting it up for the first time, and also linking it up if you've got another one, if you want to create a stereo pair. Uh, then you've got play, pause button, volume up and down, and you've got the Bluetooth connectivity option as well. Now, as you might have noticed, I said stereo function when it's used uh, in conjunction with another one. Unfortunately, this does not, um, is, is still not a stereo speaker, it's a mono speaker. So, if you want stereo sound, you're not going to get it in this £1,290 device. Also, in terms of connectivity, it has Bluetooth connectivity and connects up to AAC codec. It uses the AAC codec um, and SBC if you want as well, if you've got an older legacy device, an uh, older Android device, for example. Unfortunately, there's no APTX, APTX HD or LDAC as support. Quite a shame given the fact that this is a very expensive Bluetooth device. I would expect those codecs to be uh, integrated by default. Even though Divialet said to me most of its users are iOS, so therefore will be using the AAC codec and or will be using uh, the actual app. Now let's talk about that app. Now the app is kind of pivotal in terms of how it um, should function. Unfortunately, it's very limited in terms of functionalities and what you can actually do. You've got three separate sources that you can use over here, UPnP, Spotify and AirPlay, that's it. There's no um, uh, TuneIn, Deezer um, or a Tidal support uh, via the app. You'll have to use that via Bluetooth, which comes back to my same point. You're kind of limited in terms of Bluetooth transmission. In terms of the actual um, dial itself, it looks pretty beautiful. And depending on what music you're playing, it will show up over here and allow you to play pause and show you the exact volume of it. Aside that, uh, if you click at the top right as well, 
You can also enable or disable AV sync, uh, which is useful for synchronization with like a TV. However, what I did find over here is that even when connected via my uh, Samsung uh, TV, uh, via Bluetooth, the uh, AV sync um, wouldn't work. And that's simply because it's on the aux input. So you have to connect this via hard wire, if that makes sense, so therefore defeating the point of it being a Bluetooth speaker in order to kind of uh, benefit from this sort of AV sync um, functionality. Um, aside that, uh, you can quickly change source, for example, like so, and you can activate, let's say, Bluetooth straight away, and that's it. It's very simplistic, and as much as it's nice to look at, I just find it too simplistic for my liking. I would have liked more controls, especially the fact that if you want to play music, the UPN, uh, UN, UPNP option will tell you, go and download an app such as Bubble um, UPNP, which is fine. I absolutely like the app and it's fully comprehensive, but why should I download another app in order to play music through this app to then play through here? It doesn't make sense. Why not just integrate it within the app, like let's say Sonos do or other companies do, just have it integrated within the app. Now, just a little bit of a shame, However, again, iOS users will have AirPlay, um, not AirPlay 2, but AirPlay um, to use, so you can um, quickly send it and drop it via AirPlay to your, um, to your DVI reactor. But again, I'm an Android user, and in this case, very much limited in terms of the functionalities. So now let's talk about sound quality. Now, um, I'm going to be playing some copyright-free uh, copyright free music simply because um, the, I don't want this video to be blocked worldwide as it normally is when I play non-copyright music. So sorry for the music choice, but nevertheless, I will post these videos, uh, these YouTube videos uh, in the uh, description below so you guys can hear it for yourselves. But nevertheless, I'm going to go quiet now and just play a selection of different songs and let you guys experience the uh, actual speaker itself. So it's connected via Bluetooth as an FYI again and it's AAC codec. <laughs> So let's quickly talk about this song that I was just playing there, a random song again I found on YouTube, but nevertheless it's, it's actually quite good reproduction of what this speaker is able to do. So as you were able to see, it's got this wobbly sort of function, this kind of flappy bird uh, type of look to it, which looks fantastic, uh, I've got to say, uh, very much like the old Phantom as well. Um, what this means is that the bass drivers, the two bass drivers that you've got over here, actually produce an incredible sub and mid bass reproduction. Very heavy in the mid bass slam and excellent in terms of the sub bass reproduction. One of the best Bluetooth speakers I've heard, alongside its larger sibling, the Phantom, it does sound incredible. It sounds like a subwoofer. It sounds like you've got an actual different unit that's actually powering all this bass that's coming at you. And not only is it in terms of quantity, but also talking about quality as well. Precise tunes, not uh, wobbly, not uncontrolled to say the least. However, the story changes when we're talking about the mids and the highs. The mids are completely recessed, at least on the Reactor 900, I found it just too recessed, too V-shaped, too pushed back, too overpowered by that mid bass slam. And at this price point, I, I absolutely want, not perfection, but absolutely near there. Speakers that cost even in half the price sound better in the mid-range reproduction. The highs do roll off at the top end, and yes, they have this nice little sparkle, but due to that lacking tweeter that's there, there's no dedicated high-end tweeter. It's built into that mid-range, or the, the, the full-range speaker, sorry. So the mids and highs are kind of being jumbled all together and put through that little driver there. Now, it's absolutely fine, but again, compared to what it should be, especially when in terms of its price, it's actually pretty disappointing. 
Now in terms of soundstage, this does fill a room. This is absolutely ridiculously loud. What I was playing it at, what I think was about 20-30% of max volume, this thing gets really loud. However, in terms of overall volume, that's one thing to set aside. Let's say the Reactor 600 will be a little less loud than the 900 and these will respectively be lower in terms of volume over the, the bigger Phantom. I don't see why you'd ever need it to be this loud, but nevertheless, what I liked about it is the fact that there was no distortion. No matter what level I cranked it to, to the point that my whole house or flat shall I say was shaking because of those bass drivers, this thing doesn't distort, it sounds fantastic at any level and even at lower volumes you can enjoy this as well. In terms of the width and the, the sort of instrument separation it sounds relatively good, however due to its size and also just due to the way that the sound is reproduced in a mono uh, sense, it's not a stereo speaker, it does sound a little bit more claustrophobic, it doesn't sound as open as it could be, it, it feels like music is kind of con congested into one thing. Like if I use my hands as a good description, it feels like congested in and kind of shot to you front facing. It also, because of its design and as you ate, was were hopefully able to see as I was tilting it around, it's not a 360 degree speaker. It's very much a forward sounding speaker and a mono speaker um, at it as well. So in terms of soundstage, yes, it's good at instrument separation. Yes, it's good at width and overall volume, but it's not one I would choose in terms of having that sort of immersive sound. It just feels too claustrophobic for me uh, to be really enjoying it and just, you know, having my eyes closed and being chucked into um, an ocean, for example, and listening to these lovely tunes. So, overall the sound quality is good, but it's not amazing, especially at its price, it's actually relatively disappointing to say the least. So overall, what do I think of this little cute egg-shaped speaker? Well, to be quite honest, yes it does look unique and it looks a little bit different, but to me that doesn't warrant £1,290. I just don't understand why someone would spend so much money and be disappointed by the mid-range, the mono speaker, the, the lack of Bluetooth support and an app that's pretty primitive to be quite honest with you. I'm not trying to flame the speaker or divvy at it, far from it. I think they've done a great job in reproducing such an incredible mid-bass and sub-bass response from a small little contraption like this. Is really should be applauded. I wish more pe more manufacturers would do this. But if you're looking for a Bluetooth speaker, Samsung's uh, VL5 via AKG, uh, Nime, Name Audio also do fantastic Bluetooth speakers, and Bluetooth speakers aside, you've got full-blown soundbars that cost less than this and will deliver a much better overall sound uh, frequency throughout the range and give you more immersion and give you huge amount of compatibility options as well. Like for example, the Samsung HW N850, the one that I actually use every day, is far better than this little thing can do. And of course, it's gonna give you much better sub-bass reproduction, but in a flat or in a house, why do I need all of that bass when I'm not gonna get that quality in the mid-range? And even then, compare it to a full-blown hi-fi system with a, a dedicated amplifier and receiver, and suddenly you're, you're looking at a speaker that's completely out of its depth. So, in all honesty, sonically and in terms of features, I can't recommend it. If you want something that looks kind of cool and, you know, floats around almost, yes, get it, but there is other options out there. And yes, they might not look as unique, and if you want to stand out and you're someone like that, I don't think sound quality is really something you're ever going to care about, but if you're really in terms of sound quality and you want something that's going to be more precise in the mid-range tones or overall in terms of frequency or even in terms of uh, its compatibility and is not dedicated just to Apple or iOS devices, as in catered for majority of, of it, then you should look elsewhere. So that's it, that's my honest review. I can't recommend this product, it's not something I would personally buy or ever buy myself. If it was maybe half the price or even a third of the price, I would actively recommend it just because it's pretty unique and pretty cool and can cater for people who love bass. 
So there we go guys, I've been totally dubbed. If you like this review, make sure you give it a like. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people disliking it and hating on me, especially for the echo in this room. But nevertheless, I can't help that. Favourite and share, uh, as it always helps the channel grow. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this speaker or what speaker you would buy if you had £1,290 at your disposal. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed. Take care and bye-bye.